Welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Jennifer Kirk. And I'm Dave Lees. And we want to start with our Puritans, our winner from last week, NHK. Okay, I'm going to try to pronounce his name. Rook Quasi? 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 Um, so we couldn't send him the prize pack because he is in France, but I'm giving you a nice shout out, Rook Parabins. He got 8 out of 12 medalists right. He was also Team Rosano. Douglas won again. Douglas is like the surprise I fantasy. I moved from Team Sisney to Team Rosano. I mean, I moved yeah. from Team Eldridge last week to Team Rosano. I mean, <laughs> when you have someone winning week after week, a la Team Jenny, like you gotta start to. Actually, it's been kind of back and forth, but I didn't win, win this last week. So we decided, people, for this week's Grand Prix Final, points are going to be doubled, which mm -hmm. is very exciting. Um, Jennifer Crater, she's our current winner. She has a large lead, but that may change after this week. I'm the Peter medalist at this point. Um, Got to move up. Megan Duham, well, parabens to you as well. Go to Puritan.com. We posted on our website this week. We have a new thing we're doing every month, what we're living for. So many mm -hmm. of the products that we're living for are on there. And now that you're Christmas shopping, you can go to Puritans. But mm -hmm. before we discuss some of the events this week and preview next week's Grand Prix Final, we want to discuss... I got to talk about it because I know you're going to like roll your eyes. I love attracted Jordan into our life. I realized that. I love weekend. attracted Jordan into our lives. You okay. followed him on Instagram last year. I did? Yeah. Accidentally. Accident. Like, it was not on purpose, Jordan. I'm sorry. About it, everything. Oh, really? You know what it is? Okay. I'll talk to you off air. It was the numbers thing that we're doing. Because like, yes. he wasn't following us. Jordan, if you're not following us, we're not going to follow you. Um, but pause. So this is, so he was a ballet dancer, Northwest Ballet Company, in, out of uh, Seattle. Yeah. Very good company. And he was on a television program that they put on the web about dancers who were having trouble kind of transitioning. Not that he was having trouble, but he was talking about the transition that Many skaters go through dancers from one discipline when your whole life is dance and then you have to go to college or on to the next thing. And somebody sent me the link and I was like, oh, I like this guy. Like he's very articulate, well-spoken. So I think I friend requested him. This was like three years ago. And I realized this morning something went off in my brain. Now he's like in our life and we're going to talk about a product. Every week we're going to talk about products, but I want to talk about him. So the law of attraction works, people. Do you have anything to add? I mean, how do you think you attracted him into our life? Well, I knew him because he likes gymnastics and skating. Oh. And then he obviously he sponsored our videos last oh. season. And now we have a 10% discount to offer our TSL viewers because we were waiting for his new products to come out because he recently redid. He has a brand new line of products for the Christmas season. And talk about the product that you are loving. Okay, so you know how, and I know you guys are like, this is not an infomercial, whatever it's called, made for TV stuff. But, but, but skin is important. But legit, I do want to talk about this. This is this hydrating serum. I talked about it last week. I get really dry skin. Just three drops of this in the morning or night. You can put it under your eyes. I've been using it all week since you sent it to me. And it's actually really good. So I recommend it. And if you do the checkout code TSL10, you do get 10% off. I also like how sleek it is. But it, it actually does work. So I recommend you guys choose this product. Go to jordansamuelskin.com. We love him. And we're going to be talking about some of his products in the coming weeks as we look ahead to the holiday season. But let's discuss figure skating. Golden spin. It is the most wonderful time. Oh, what do we have now? Oh, Whoa. we have Christmas lights. Oh, I, it looks like you're gonna like. <laughs> because Jenny, we've made it to the end of the grand, the regular part yeah. of the Grand Prix. It's always a marathon, and you know, it's, I always feel a sense of accomplishment with the final coming up. You know, oh, there's like a week or two off before Russian nationals, and it is the most wonderful time of the year, and it is where the drama is about to heat up. But before that. There was a last little senior B in Croatia this week that I'm very excited to discuss with you. I know. You. I wasn't really expecting so many great skaters to be in Croatia. And this was probably like the last event before nationals for many of these skaters. Let's talk about the ladies because your daughter from last season, Elisaveta Tukdimizhova, rough season so far, coming out with a win here in Croatia. Were you impressed with her this week? Let's discuss her performances. So she is a pure athlete this season. Uh, <laughs> she is gritting out these performances. I feel like she's willing herself to get back into form in competition. It's not the prettiest of victories. Oh, I know. People are going to say that we're regulating our voices, but what I'm doing is I'm whispering to Jenny and saying... Oh, we need media training, Dave Lee, because apparently I move back and forth and our pitch mm -hmm. changes. It's called conversation. We're not trying to be like little anchors. We're just having a conversation. Um, 
So it's, it's rough. It's, she's rough around the edges, Jenny. She is gritting these jumps out. Um, they're very, she's really on the curve here going for the axle. The axle technique is really good, but she's not checking her jump landings uh, at all. And she's really having problems with the double threes out of a lot of her jumps. And she doesn't look to be in the same kind of shape that she was last year. Perhaps she's tired. Perhaps the season is kind of moving pressure. along. Yeah. yeah, pressure, exhaustion. She did a million competitions last year. I only imagine how her body feels, but she looks like she's willing herself to get into form and to be competitive with these other Russian ladies. And she really put out the content here, did better short program than we have seen, but it's still, she lacks the confidence and the fire that she had last season. She doesn't have the same look in her eye when she goes out. There is pressure this season. The field is tougher this year. She went back to her Bolero short program, which I thought was a good idea because she had so much success with that. It doesn't quite have the same ownership of the ice that she had last year. What are, you, what are your take on her? Yeah, I think the weaknesses in her skating are really coming through. The spins she needs to work on, spins the layback position, the sit spin. The sit spin is ugly. Yeah. Because she bends her leg when she's out, and she could straighten it and have a much nicer position. Um, the bent leg position is really just not aesthetically pleasing. No, and as a skater, when you're making those little step outs, it's because of one of two reasons. Either you're tired, which we'll talk about with Angela Wang in a little bit, and you're just tired, your leg isn't checking, you don't have that strength at the end of a program, or you're so manic in your head that you're on to the next thing, that you're not in that present moment to kind of complete a jump from takeoff to landing. And I think that's where she is at this point in the season, it just seems like she's so, I just need to stay on my feet, I just need to stay on my feet. There are six crossovers and a push before her second triple lutz. There are four crossovers before her triple sow hop double there axle. There are six crossovers before the triple lutz double toe double loop. And then she does the arena slits guy landings where it's right across next to the boards and she has no speed coming out by the end of that combination. Yeah, she's like straight up and down. I think the thing about it was last season she came out and it was she was so new in terms of seeing her she really took ownership of her skating and I was watching this and I thought I wouldn't pay to watch her perform at this point. She's not performing and the mm -hmm. things in her skating even the Rosano she's not doing it the past last couple of events, there's nothing that's really special or stands out or world champion. It's like she doesn't quite believe it yet or she's skating to try to defend that. And I think even though this was a victory, I was underwhelmed at the end of it. Yeah, I definitely agree with you about the positions. And I was wondering how you would mark her for the second mark because I was thinking, so she tries with arm movements, but it's too late. And when you watch her choreographic step, she does do a little bit of a spread eagle kind of variation where she hunches and she does do a falling leaf. But besides that, it's still all crossovers. Yeah. And there's not much going on. There's, the transitions are not in this I program. couldn't give her above a high six for transitions. I mean, I could give her above a high six for most of these. Mm -hmm. uh, for interpretation, maybe I would go into a low seven, mm -hmm. the low to mid seven. But I was thinking for performance execution. She's not perfect. So and, and here's the thing. She does give some arms at the end of the program. But that's, to me, she's performing it, but that's not transitions. That's really minimal choreography, too. too little too late, a little too wrong, and I can't wait. It's but, it, yeah, it's, it's, and it's so much after everything else technically is done. Um, so I, I'm i not sold skills, on her. This but the posture season. is yeah. weak, and it's weaker even this season than last, and perhaps the costuming is, is more glaring. Uh, she... The, the skating skills and the transitions and the choreography have to be quite low if they're judging fairly. Of course, the judges tend to go blanket across the board here, but I would really say across, against the other top ladies, whom she wasn't really against here, it's going to be hard to stack her up when she has so many crossovers to get the jumps done. I mean, she does do the triple axle, which she has great technique on, but she's not harnessing it uh, in terms of the landing. And then the rest of the program, to me, both the short and the long, especially the free, is just really lacking in terms of choreography. Meager. Yeah, meager for that transition. I want to yeah. discuss um, a couple of the American ladies really quickly, though. <laughs> Karen Chen, I was really impressed with her here. I didn't think her loop in her short was a carrot, just saying. The let's toe, yes, but I'm going to mm. argue with that loop. Her mm. money, and I talk about this before, is the double axle, half loop, triple sound, that long program. And I don't know if it was because this rink was a little bit bigger, but the spirals were in the middle of the ice this week, and it really she, made a difference. I don't know. I didn't know if it's she. they told her to get it away from the boards, or maybe it's just a bigger rink than we saw at some of the other events. But it makes such a difference, and she's holding it. 
The last spin at the end is very dynamic. She must get a new dress before nationals because it reads American flag. And I know what they're trying to do, the mm -hmm. tattered French flag, but it comes across American flag. Um, could we be talking about her on a world team? That's what I, I was going to ask you if she thought that she's in line for Worlds. The one thing is that Karen is willing herself to do better after kind of a rough Grand Prix. She skated in the free, I think as well as we're going to see her skate this year. I think that's about as well as she can do right now. She has a problem getting the toe around in the combination. But overall, it was a really solid skate for her. Obviously, the single axle and the short, she can't do at Nationals. She needs to get rid of the over-the-boot tights. It's We need to... Grow I her think up they're maybe trying to lengthen because she's a compact. I know she's compact, like a compact car, like a Toyota Camry, but we have to really be, I think it just looks clunky. And I, it's, it's just not, no one has hooves on their feet at the end with the over the boot tights. I'm going to agree with Marina Zueva there. Um, I also think that she could hold the Ina Bauer longer because mm -hmm. she does have a nice Ina Bauer. They're trying to do a transition into the Lutz, but I would hold it for a little second. It just makes your skating look more senior. And hopefully she can get a little bit more confidence because we talk about star quality. She doesn't have that look in her eye that she's owning the she's ice She's just yet. skating a little bit scared. And I think you talk about the Ina. I want to talk about this too. She has a couple of like token transitions, like an Ina Bauer or a split jump, but she doesn't have a lot of rockers, chaktas, like mohawks in between. It's, it's like Sasha Cohen, Tarasova. Yeah, or it's three or four crossovers, and then let's skate really fast, do a pump, and a quick something right before the jump to make it look like it's a transition. But when I watch for transitions, it should be seamless throughout. And as you're doing the crossovers, you should be adding certain moves, transitions, so it's not just right before the jump. But great to see her do well here. And Angela Wang coming in the top five finish. Um, it's so similar to what we saw at her last event, though. And often we talk about skaters who train in altitude like they have some sort of, they're going to get through their long program. She looked tired. It looked like the mistakes she made in her long program, those were tired mistakes, in my opinion. Do you think that she's physically tired or mentally tired? This looked phys The last event looked mentally. It looked like okay. she had a little mistake, and then it was like, oh, this looked like the step out on the sow looked physically exhausted at the end of the program. It's always the second half of the program with her. The one thing that I notice is that she doesn't own the ice when she goes out there. I think that there's almost a, an arrogance. When you go out to go and get the result, when you go out there with attack, you have to say, I am going out to get what belongs to me. I have worked for this. I deserve it. And that's kind of a arrogant attitude because why doesn't the person next to you deserve it but she kind of skates very carefully it's very pretty it's in a nice dress everything is proper it's in line but she doesn't go out with that fire you know when you watch like michelle sasha you and your short program with chicago you go out with a certain killer instinct and an attack that i'm going to do this and it almost seems like angela tries to attack the first half and then the second she loses She that. relaxes a little bit or something. Yeah. And I, you know, I tell my students, I always say, when you go out to compete, you're not going out to compete against somebody else. You shouldn't be thinking about a competitor. You, the only thing you need to think about is this is my time to show off. And you can be nervous when you do something to show off, but you have these four minutes. This is your time. They put your name on it. Show off what you've been doing. And if you're going to fall, make it a magnificent, you know, Anna Pogorelia fall. I mean, make it a performance. And I feel like Angela, maybe her personality isn't that showy, like, I need a spotlight. That's okay, though. There's still things. Show off the hard work that you've been doing. She needs to do that more because... She needs to believe she deserves it. Because the one thing I start to think is that she hasn't been in the, in the very, very top. She's always gotten close, but then the mistakes kind of creep in, and then you lose a spot, two spots, three spots. <coughs> program goes along and it seems like when she has one little program where you see the you know she's dropping her free leg on the landings it happens once and then it's like the last four jumping passes of the program there they all go it's just points that are being left on yeah, the table and you have to make us all these skaters you have to make us believe it and no matter if you're a gracie gold or if you're an angela like you have to capture our attention every time and she has all the goods she needs to do that at national you're a girl though this season Satnikova, what, Satnikova, Satnikova, sorry, sorry, Papa, whatever, the Russian YouTuber who hates me, hi, <laughs> um, pause, what did you think, was this good or bad, what do we think, she's your girl this season, she is my girl, you know, I just, I love to watch her come back, she makes me think that, you know, we can all come back and be, you know, old women trying to get back in the sport, trying to get back to our forest, pause, old women, she's like in her 20s, 
But Jenny, like, she but has Jenny. not been able to give a convincing performance since her Olympic win was in such controversy. And I feel she's just trying to prove something to herself, to us, that she is that skater. And it just seems like she is fighting. But I don't know if she has enough time before nationals to get this together. I thought it was weird that she didn't go for the triple-triple combination that she did at the Cup of Russia. She left it out here. She wasn't as close. It looks like you're about to sneeze at any moment. No, I have a really – guys, I'm sick again. I have a really <laughs> stuffy nose, so I'm trying not to do what I did on the airplane with Dave going to Chicago. I blew my nose all over the place. So I'm trying to, like, hold it in, but it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with Sonikova, it just looks like you know she's popping the jumps. It doesn't look like it went in the right direction from the last event here. I don't see a step up. It looked like a bit of a slide. What did you think? Yeah, yeah. That, that these mistakes. I mean, she has great moments. She'll do a great triple flip. She'll do a great just normal triple lets, and then she just she looks exhausted. She even looks exhausted in her short program when she starts to do the kind of dancey shimmy part. It's like that double axle. I'm holding on for it. I don't know if she's well, going it's to. It's labored. And that's yeah. the thing. It's, she looks, it's very tired, but she's flinging her body. Sometimes she lands with both arms in front, which is a little bit. Yeah, it's like she's holding on for dear life in the double axle triple toe fall in the long program. That was an Anna Pogorolaya fall. I mean, yeah. it was like she, she took effort to get up from that. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah Underwhelmed. I don't predict she'll, after this. I don't think she's going to be on the world team. Unless they really want her there. But do you think that she could get back into form in three months? No. I think if it's not here now, I mean, we kind of gave her a mulligan at mm. Cup of Russia where she seemed tired or emotional mm. at the end. Like, okay, it's your first time back. Like, you're going to have extra exhaustions going to go to just all of those emotions that come along with it. But this should have been really on. She needed to have been first or second here. Um, mm. This was not good, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah, the one thing I noticed is that she does have much deeper edges than Tuktamisheva. So when you watch Tuktamisheva skate, she'll be doing footwork, but her upper body never changes position. She's, and it makes the program really boring uh, to watch. So Nikva gets really, she leans into the edge. Mm -hmm. She leans, you know, she's really riding the edge and the thing. And she has better skating skills than Tuktamisheva, but she is slow right now because I think it's a stamina issue, a training issue. She just does not look like she's in it. I predict she'll do better at Russian Nationals, but... I can't see her being much higher than fifth. No. I just can't see it going there realistically between now and then. But it'll be really interesting to watch that competition. Well, a man who really surprised us here was Dennis Ten coming out with. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to give a shout out to Terzin Baeva, who was second here. Who it was good, but again, she was pitched forward on a lot of her landings. I just thought that she again looked like she's not having the same confidence that we saw earlier in the season. But yes, Dennis Ten, Jenny. Talk about willing yourself back into form. Where has that skater been? Okay, so I have a question. So in your mind, does it taint at all his legacy in the sport or his legacy as an athlete that we can't trust him? Because for me, it makes me, I really adore his skating when he puts it together. Even when he doesn't, he's a phenomenal skater. But I don't, I don't know. It's hard for me to like really have him on Team Jenny because I n I don't like that I don't know what to expect from so him. So there are two different Dennis Tens. There's the Dennis Ten where you think like Olympic medalist Dennis Ten, world medalist Dennis Ten. That's the second half of the season. For like a three month window, he can get it together, kind of like Nicole Bobek at nationals uh -huh. and maybe worlds. Maybe the beginning like of the season. No. Yeah, that's like, in America. There's going to be at least two point five falls. <laughs> yeah, like it's going to be ugly. It's going to be yeah. rough. I need, but he just does this time and time again and to the point where I'm even wondering if it was going to happen this year. It be yeah. you become up and down, but he is brilliant when he's on. But I don't think he's ever good enough. That he needs to be strong enough throughout a year if he wants to challenge Hanyu. That's what you it know, is. If he's coming from behind, he's not. Gonna, no, you listen. have to show the judges that you're not a flash in the pan. Like, and it's not saying that he's, he's a great skater and he's shown that mm. enough times under pressure, mm. but it's not enough within one season. I mm. think there's something to be said for a skater who can put it together, even if you kind of get better event by event, mm. as you should. But a skater that can kind of stay consistent throughout a season, that's a skill. And that's a skill that I really respect, and I don't see that with him. I don't know if it's mental. He doesn't know if he can get ready and stay peaked as long. But it's just, it's very interesting because he wasn't jumping at all. He came into Skate America. Apparently those were his first, first few first runs second rows, yeah. of those programs. And then France was better and he looked like he could do the skills, but he wasn't prepared. And now he's landing everything. So 
I don't love the programs this year. And I feel like they're trying to build off of what he did in the short program last season. I find it's a little bit too artistic in some and then missing in areas and it, the music doesn't work for me. And I know that it's probably a piece of music we should probably know or something. Or I know Jonathan Byer didn't know what it was and he's an opera singer. So Well, and, and that's the thing and we talk about it with Piper and Paul too. You need to kind of look think outside the box a little bit, but it can't be so far outside the box that, I mean, skating community, we're pretty educated. Like, I mean, we're not really that dense, although we make fun yeah. of ourselves for being that way. If we can't even understand it or we can't relate to a piece of music, it's going to hurt you. You need that I audience behind you. And though there are some great pieces of choreography in his programs, to me, he tries to use his body a little bit more, but it's the long room is a little bit empty uh, in terms of some I don't know if he took some stuff out in there but it just doesn't look as special as what he did last season I would probably move back to his free skate from last year maybe keep the short the music gets a little hard on the ears at times I wouldn't want to hear it every day in training but it's it's interesting and he hasn't been back in LA since France so this is Dennis training on his own that's it's interesting to see how he kind of willed himself for this event and I'm really curious to see how the rest of the year is going to go but his technique is so gorgeous when he does it those quads are so nice you have to think about the pluses that you want to give him but I don't know because now you think top three, Han Yu, Javier, and Dennis battling it out. But now Patrick is in the mix. And Shoma. And, if they, and Shoma. And if they're all clean, what do you do? Yeah. And it's, it's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, It'll be good to see. Well, it was also good yeah. to see Adam Rapon doing well again. He's had a pretty consistent and steady season here. Would you label this as a good season? I mean, in, in uh, watching it as an outsider after this event, do you think he's where he needs to be? Internationals? They need to make a really strong decision on the quad lutz. What are we going to do? We've seen the double carrot. We've seen quad lutz, carrot, carrot. Uh, we've seen it in the short. We've seen it taken out of the short. We've seen it in the long. We've seen it taken out of the long. What would you do as his coach at this point? Because I see Adam as being on the bubble. Mm -hmm. He is on the bubble with, with Jason being injured and Max doing well. He still had a bit of a rough skate uh, in France. So you, He's not completely someone that we can definitely put our money on just yet. I would say Adam's in the conversation, but he's from behind. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Is he still in that third spot for Worlds? You have Nathan coming up right behind him. What would you advise? with the In quadrant? my mind, I still see him in the third spot. I would take it out of the short, do it in the long. Um, mm -hmm. I think Max will come into Nationals be very strong. He will win. Mm -hmm. Jason will be good, as Jason can be. He won't do a great quad, I don't think, but um, he will do his other stuff. I think it's kind of good that they gave him this break to rest mm -hmm. whatever injury he's dealing with and to get back in it. Um, but I think Nathan is really the wild card. And then some of the other men that we've talked about the past few weeks could come in there if there's two good performances. Um don't do it in the short, do it in the long. It's just not consistent. It's just a, it's kind of like the quad left, throw quad under, left. But doing it in the long. We've seen him do good long, longs before. He needs to skate really well at nationals. I think the men's event is going to be tough. People love his program. So when the judges are responding, I think he's going to have the audience. And I think he will stand up on a quad let's at nationals in the long. But the short, he needs to stand in the short. That's the biggest hurdle for him, I would I say. I noticed without the fall, because he's been falling on the quad yeah. lutz um, throughout the season. It was, a, he had more energy for the program because the fall is so deflating. It looked like he was more confident and performing more uh, throughout the program. And then he just had the little error at the end that he could not get away with. Uh, the triple lutz single toe, which cost him quite uh, a number of points here. And uh, your single toe, I know. And it just looked and Mervin, like... Mervyn, we're going to discuss you in a minute. <laughs> with Adam it just looked like his brain I mean he stood up with his he straightened his knee a little bit oh and he went to pick in and that's when that happens on the yeah and it is cost him here he still got the silver I mean I think that's the best he was going to do that's good overall. I'm beating yeah. Adrian Pikeyev. Um but yeah I would say at Nationals he has to do a great short program that's really the thing I have faith that he'll be trained to do a good long um, and he'll stand up on the quad but the short is oh well well, makes me a little nervous. Adian, though, very better here. He's he's proven he can be more consistent. He needs to add more face. Um, mm -hmm. Better triple axles. I want to discuss so Alex Johnson really quickly. Okay. As I was watching, he went back to an old long program here. And they added lyrics. Yeah, yeah I thought it was very good. I love the long program. But as I was watching, 
he's not a natural jumper. And I think the problem is when, I'm sure when he hears that or when other skaters hear that, you think that means I'm a bad skater. He needs no. to, no, and that, and it's not true. He needs, he could be a national champion as an ice dancer. Like the, it's just so blatant and glaring that he's this gorgeous, phenomenal skater who cannot jump. And in my opinion, he's going to waste his career and his talent if he doesn't switch disciplines. Um, the, the, it's just, and, and I, this is a compliment to him. And I think the problem is our skating culture in the U S is so geared towards, you have to be a jumper to be a good skater. You need to be the best technical jumper. You have to have the total package and a single skater in order to be successful. And that's so not true. And he's such mm. a great skater. And I just think he's doing himself a disservice by he's just not a natural jumper, but he's so good in so many other areas and he could really capitalize on that. And it's hard watching that. Um, when I think he could be successful in another discipline. I mean, he did do a good job overall here, but I agree with you, especially with the Lutzes and the flips that I know that drive you nuts with him, with the jumping with his back. It just looks, he always has the errors on the combinations. You know, he needed a clean short as well. He's someone who could really be in the conversation at Nationals if he could do clean, two clean programs all the way through. I just don't know that I trust that to happen without the little mistakes here. He lost a lot of little points in the free skate that added up. I mean, he usually does the Lutz half loop flip combination. He left that out. At sectionals, it was a little rough too. Apparently, he kind of decides if he's going to do it on the spot. Uh, some of the skaters were saying he kind of changes it up a bit. He has gotten himself in much better form than we saw a couple of months ago. It looks mentally as well. He really did a good job at sectionals, a good job here. He is a more emotional skater. He's more on the artsy side, so the, the consistency can go up and down. But I expect he'll have a good Nationals, but again, it's going to come down to confidence and believing to finish I where he belongs. It's a yeah. wasted oh. talent if he, in the next three years or however long he wants to stay in this board, if he's seventh at Nationals, which is good, or six, you know, a good, strong placement. Mm -hmm. I just think he could have a series of national medals, international medals, if he changed disciplines. And it's not an insult. It's actually yeah. saying that he's very, very talented. Well, let's change disciplines here and discuss the pairs. Tarasova and Morozov, a win here, but not winning the long program. Tara with an H and Danny winning that program. Let's talk about the Russians first, though. Did you see improvements? Oh, is this the I Papa user? The Papa? Papa <laughs> YouTube user? I mean, I'm just... I, in advance, and we, maybe we should talk about that. Jenny, sometimes okay. are funny. <laughs> Occasionally, a fall can be funny. I just think that a lot of these fans are so young that they take it either as a slight against Russia. We were raised on watching Letitia Uber's performance from the 92 Olympics. Like, if you want to see someone wipe out to where the Pause. Falls so I used to train with her. She was a Scott Fold in the summer. Like, legit, you cannot skate on the ice with her. She hauls into that triple left. Like, Ugh! so she is the scariest human being to skate with in the history of ever. Keep going. <laughs> like, just say it. <laughs> Such a fan, to have to say. Yes. She did that program where she was a hooker on crack. <laughs> I mean, come on, legend, people. This is a legend. 98, 99 season, not making it up. You go back Google there. Google it, you YouTube it. <laughs> yes, that was her performance. Uh, that was the character that she was embodying. Um, so yeah, okay, talk about Tarasov and Morozov. She's giving me Shishkoma and Naumov at the 94 Olympics. Okay. I'm going to lower my voice for one moment when I say this. <laughs> We're doing it on purpose, people. Not a compliment. Just saying. <laughs> it's kind of like... <laughs> and now let me explain why. Woo! Let's explain what that means, as our glossary will be done soon. Shishkova and Naumov means that there are two brilliant Russian teams ahead of you, or three, and you kind of are beige falling into the paint where you kind of have to, you know, have a more elaborate costume because... On the ice, it's a little bit. Pause. I can't handle literal costumes. What is the music note? <laughs> Get rid of it. Continue. So again, not a compliment. Um, the thing about them is that they are have a lot going for them technically. Presentation-wise, not so much. They've never really made us believe how good they are because their programs are not up to their level of talent. Technically, they can be very brilliant, they did only lose the long here by a couple tenths of a point, I believe, but it's just they're not the legendary skaters that they could be based on yeah. their technique. And the problem is when you're losing 
without a disaster. I mean, Tara and Danny are, they skated very, very well here, but they're not to the world <laughs> caliber quality as someone like a Tarasov and Morozov. Morozov. I mean, just, just saying, in my opinion, but the fact that they, it wasn't a big implosion and that they still lost, um, she seems to have a little bit of a dark aura to her this season. Better on the sow cow, but some of the landings on the jumps, like the toe loop, it just seems like there's something, maybe she does, ooh, Maybe she does have legit boot problems. Like, it looks like something's a little bit off for her yeah. this year. Just not a great um, outing here. And they are, they do a team that you're kind of waiting for them to put it together, to put the whole package together, because they do have a lot of talent and good qualities. The one thing is that their skating is so much stronger than Tara and Danny's. Um, Tara and Danny did a really beautiful job here. They really do have to work on their strength, though. They just don't look strong and it needs to be from the stroking from the ballet training from the pilates from every single day they just need to get stronger physically because when you watch Tarasov and morozov you can see the, the core strength, it's like a core, the core yeah throughout their bodies and that's and posture. what posture yeah, in the little things too like um the landing of their hand-to-hand -hand lift tara and danny in the long program and I talked about it our first recap this season, she still doesn't get her leg up when he did on the dismount. Those are the little things that you see at Tarasov and Rosa. They don't have the dynamic kind of power. And I think Tara and Danny really do relate to this Phantom program. Um, but those are the little, little things that we see Alexa doing this season that's really enhanced her skating in our eyes and so many other people. Just those little details. I love the transitions, though, that Tara and Danny have before the throw triplets. That one kind of carry lift that they do and then she obviously like the gymnastics thing before the throw triplets it was good here and um they really needed to beat marissa and simon and they they did in like fantastic fashion okay so marissa and simon and i told you this over text so marissa and mervin oh jeez hi mervin legit hi mervin <laughs> no pause I can call you whatever I want because I'm mad at you because you did another single toe. So take that back. I don't feel bad at all. Actually, I really do because that makes me sound like an idiot. But, okay, let me discuss them. I think they should switch in their program. They should, instead of doing the throw south first, they should do the throw double axle. They should do the triple toes first and then the south second half of the program. I think they have developed a mental block um, for that slow section. They go into the toes and I feel like because they've never been successful with it, it's kind of like in your back of your mind as a skater, you think, uh-oh, here's going to be another mistake. There's no reason to fall in a throw double axle at this point. I just think that they're not confident in that. Um, and if they switch it around and just did it like the first thing, don't even think about it, just do the throw double axle and make that middle section really strong with a throw sow. She can do that in her sleep and a side-by-side -side sow. I think that would put them in better stead, in my opinion. It'll be Perfect. interesting. They'll have to really rework the choreography, but they need to make a big <coughs> move because they have the talent Again, they have some of the little extras that we're talking about, Taras and Morozov, that Tara and Danny don't have. Marissa and Mervin do have that. But what they also have is really consistent inconsistency with this free skate. <laughs> consistent inconsistency. That's not the kind of consistency that you want to have. Because you can't even say it's inconsistent because it's not up and down. No, like, it's, like we know where the mistakes no. are going to go. Yeah. yeah. You know where the mistakes are going to be. You cannot be missing a throw double axle. This was your element to put in as a gimme because the flip wasn't ready yet. And if the flip isn't ready, we, it's just the program needs an overhaul. And they can do the toes well, but again, perhaps it is a mental block in that second part of the program because we always see the same mistakes again, again, again. And they do have good technique on them when they do them. You know, the jumps do look good, but again, they should be in that second spot and they're not right now. And it's getting really close to crunch time to where Worlds are Marissa's hometown and they may not go because we only have two spots for pairs and they're really and, on the bubble and, and falling behind. You know, we can forgive a skate Detroit. Nobody <laughs> pays attention to summer events like that. <laughs> we can even forgive maybe their first event, a couple of the mistakes. But at this point, you can't be making the same mistakes. Either change the material, do something because this was not okay in my mind. Um, you can't do a single toe, Mervyn. <laughs> Particularly if Marissa misses the first triple toe, you don't even get any points for this single. It's not even like you're fighting for whatever points you could get for a single toe. Just leave it at home. Let's discuss really quickly, though. The, any more pairs you want to touch upon? Uh, pairs we touch on? No, I think we're good. I think okay. we're good on the pairs here. I just have, have a couple of comments touch. about Hawaii and Baker coming in second here. Um, okay, so this is not going to be their season at Nationals, in my opinion. 
I think They're going for the big pewta. Jenny. Oh, bless. <laughs> is it like a silver color? I don't even know. I always thought they tried no, to make it, it a is, gold. It's pewter. It's pewter. Oh my god, I can't believe we, we handled the pewter metal on DSL. <laughs> <laughs> Cleanse, get that rid of. Okay, so her skirts if they're not even going to change the material, which they can at this point, they need new costumes because they're too muted and the skirt is way too big in both the, the short dance and the free dance. When she does her first twizzle in the free dance, her leg gets caught in the skirt. It's super distracting. Um, and because it's like a floral young color, it makes them look even more immature when you're up against a Hubble and Donahue who have really stepped up their material this season. And, and their look. dress, if you know that you're going to get the pewter before nationals, just go and get a good costume. Like, that be you, best um, dressed. Maybe, be cutest out there. Like, be cutest in the photo because you're still in the photo. Yeah, have, have them have, like, whoa, who's that? Peter, like, she should be on top. You know, do that yeah. kind of a thing. And the suspenders, I know, again, it's more of a literal um, costume. We're not a like, fan of the literal costume. No, and here. like the blah gray pants. I just think they need to step that up. They need a switch after this season. Obviously, now isn't the time to do it, but. Um, they skated well. It's just I think it's a mistake in terms of their material this year, in my and opinion. Inard and Fabri, uh, the team who won from Italy, are very, very talented. I know we were going to get into them the week that you were having the stomach flu. I want to say the one thing about their free dance is that it kind of is all on one level of emotion, which obviously the Holocaust is horrible. But usually when you see a Schindler's <laughs> yeah, I don't think list, there was much joy. <laughs> yeah, but the it. one thing is that usually when you see a Schindler's List program, there's usually a story throughout, and there are like, still highs and lows. Yeah, you can have and, different. Things. And they just kind of have the same emotion ocean for the whole program, which is a lot for four minutes. They do have some good uh, skating skills. It looks like Barbara is a good coach. They have some really solid foundation. I expect this is a team that will move up in the future. Not the best vehicle, but it's a solid vehicle. But at the same point, we've seen the Schindler's List program a million times. You have you're to make it special. You're going to do a Swan Lake, a Schindler's List. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, even a Nutcracker at this point. you got to make it memorable, a Bolero. Um, and I don't, in my opinion, this program is not... But let's discuss really quickly before we wrap things up. Um, next week is the Grand Prix Final. You can do picks this week at mm -hmm. um, bit.ly slash TSL Challenge. I want to ask you really quick, what are your storylines that you're watching in each of the disciplines? Storyline for the ladies. What's, what do you have your uh, eyes on? The American ladies will either of them medal, because I believe that at least one of them should. And who will come out on top? Because I think that it's going to have such a storyline going into nationals. These are two girls who really want to beat one another. There is no love lost between them. Uh, and who's going to come out on top? Ashley, when we're going to get into we're going to discuss them in a separate video in a bit. So I'm going to hold my comments on both of them below. But I want to know which Russian girl is coming out on top. And how are Mao and Satoko going to fit in? Are we going to see Mao back. How about you for the ladies? I was going to say, those are my storylines. It's going to be the Russians, the Americans, and the Japanese. And there's little matchups in both three categories. <laughs> and that's really what I'm watching. In terms of the men, I'm watching Javi versus Patrick. Han Yu, is he going to have a repeat performance that we saw at NHK? I mean, that's a lot of pressure just on yourself to live up to that. I'm just so Patrick doesn't have a jump coach, but he did get a dog. Uh, apparently, oh. that is the Patrick Chan news since we've last seen him. He now has a puppy. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, good to know. And I also, I predict Uno may be a surprise medalist, in my Ooh, opinion. What are you oh. watching in the men? I have same storylines there. How is Uno going to fit in? Um, Patrick against Javier. And will Han Yu repeat? The one bad thing about doing... A career best performance at NHK. I know now it's like, ooh, that maybe should have been four months down the line, but hey, let's do it right here. Hey, you it know happens what? when it happens. He had a moment, you gotta take it when it happens. Premature but moment, it happens to the best. <laughs> yeah, you just have to hope that it keeps happening again and again and again, and I'm sure our Japanese fans will tell us that Hanyu is a king, he will do it a million times. And I think and he can do it. I mean, it, he, he should be able it, to be, he should be doing that every day in practice, so it should just, that should be his new normal. Um, how about the pairs? Well, the, the pairs. Sway and Han with Sway and Han are out. I, yeah. know, I was nervous when I heard that she had that injury. So apparently she was really rapping to the point that they almost looked like casts on her foot. She has a problem with her Achilles. Uh, that has been, I think it's smart not to compete in the final now. I also think that the Russians not being here, Veloshar and Trankov, was a little bit of strategy as well. If she does have a minor problem with her heel, 
don't push it now. I think they needed a little bit more time before they were really ready to go up against Jillian and Bob. And I expect they'll be much stronger at Worlds. I think they need more confidence and more speed with some of their elements. But I predict they'll be strong at Russian Nationals and later in the season. But I think it's going to be still Bova against Jillian. It's going to be like a repeat of last season, yeah. It's a repeat of last season. I think Stobova is going to throw her Rosano. Uh, will she have it rotated? Do you think that Jillian will go for the throw quad? And should they go for the throw quad? I don't think they throw should. Quad I think yeah. they may. I think they will land the throw quad. Sal, I just want to go to those practices. I mean, that's really where it's going to be at with the Elton John coach and Jillian trying to do the yes. throw quad in her face. I mean, those girls. And are is Jillian going to be watching Stobova the whole time? Oh, like, how yeah. does she see? How does she see every other person in their practice? Sessions? You know it. As a skater, you can totally time your jumps. I mean, you have eyes everywhere on the ice. Yes. It's very hard not to see. I also think that Kevin. How can she give like a full report back? That is always like a I just, little. Yeah, she, she's a little intense. Yeah. I think Kavagudi and Smirnoff, they could be a surprise in there if we see some mistakes. And Alexa and Chris, I'll be interested to see how their side by sides are doing, how they handle coming out there and just owning this moment. For them, I think they just need to be enjoy the moment. Yeah. We have no expectations of how they are going to fit uh, this year, but I think it's a, Make a, mark. a good yeah. opportunity. Make a mark, land those side-by-side -side jumps, and go forward. And I think in the dance, it's the US while team. it is about Hawaii Baker, I just care about how are the U.S. teams going to rank with one another. And honestly... Marina and Igor. Like, walking in the warm-up. Like, I can't wait to see, like, Where's Marina standing? Where's Igor standing? And I would have eyes on them. I'd want to see their phone bills for two weeks. Like, where are the phone calls going? Because I think that this is more important than nationals. Oh, and perhaps not this just is going this to season. dictate nationals. And I think it may dictate the next three seasons or the next two yeah. seasons. I want to I, look, I want to see ATM records. I would like to see cell phone records. I want to know where the money trail is. I want to see if there were any large withdrawals. Um, that were not for the Hermes store for Marina. Like I just, I, I'm not accusing anyone of anything on either side. I can't wait to see the panel of who's good and who's tied to which teams. If like Podmarenko's on the panel or something like that, I'm just I'm really curious to see which way it is going to go. I mean, uh, I think that the Canadians may very well win the final. I don't think it matters. It's all about the U.S. Oh, yeah. Is it going to be the Shibutani's or is it going to be Madison Chuck? And what is going to happen on the ice and what is going to happen off the ice? And then you also have Anna and Luca. I'm watching to see what are the judges going to do with them because they did very well at their first event. So all of these different storylines that we're watching, we're so excited to have another week of TSL Fantasy with you guys. Go to Puritan.com for keyword skating to get your discount code. Go to JordanSamuelSkin.com. And I, like legit, guys, try this. It's very, very good. It's because my skin gets dry here and it helps. It's good in, in the winter. And that's um, TSL10 is the keyword there. What was your moment of the week, Dave Lees? My moment of the week is people are like yelling at Jenny about being the mean one for once. <laughs> Pause! I have no apologies. I own it. Those were funny falls. And I hope to God one day Anna can look, hopefully it's today. You guys, you have to laugh at yourself. It was a hard moment and whatever she's going through, my heart goes out to her. But you got to laugh at yourself. And those were some very good falls. Parabens. The one thing is that you don't let your head go, but Anna just like let it fly. That's the first thing you learn is to keep your head up on those falls. But uh, moment of the week, because people want a nice moment, because they were very upset that apparently two weeks in a row we mentioned falls and rough. Or, okay, so Dennis 10 back to form, obviously a moment of the week. And it's always watching my girl Sotnikova. I don't know. I'm pulling for her this season. I love that Je suis malade. I love seeing someone who looks like really tired and still throwing themselves into these jumps. It's really entertaining. I love watching her on in the pair event, uh, parabens to my boy, Mr. Peterson, on his team winning the free skate and the bronze medal here on the way to the world championships. What is your moment of the that week? That was my moment watching Tara and Denning their free skate. I was on the elliptical this morning, as most all of us watch figure skating while on some sort of exercise equipment, and you also watch TSL that way, trying to work off last night's in and out. But I, I definitely enjoyed watching them skate so well. And Did I you get the pink lemonade? What is the pink lemonade? An in and out burger. They have, like, pink lemonade. No, I get water because I'm, like, the calories go to the hamburger. Oh. Like, pick, choose your battles. I mean. See, I've only been to in and out once, and I did it up. I didn't oh. do a shake. But I had the pink lemonade. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. a moment. See, I get, like, cravings for hamburgers, like, once a month. and But you can't do – then it's, like, you're up to, like, 2,000 calories. And then you wake up like, 
we don't need to talk about my Ugh, good we problems. went to dinner last night for my friend's birthday and the waiter was someone I went on a date with and it was awkward he was at a different restaurant that he used to work at I don't know it was, it was, I hate that when it's like it's unexpected and yeah you're not unexpected ready. and yeah just fun for the whole family when you're like oh blast from the past yes um oh. but pause so my moment of the week with Tara and Danny um very very good what were your moments of the week check out our TSL profile on Scott Dyer he's very talented skater and person both on and off the ice we're rooting for him as nationals this season yes and as always we want to remind you that when you are tweeting try to have more enthusiasm than Priscilla, Priscilla Gilman because really whoever does but I would like if you I would like to see our people really up their adjective game I would like to see them their enthusiasm for the sport I would like to see them tagging people with really emojis oh, we're all about emoji. the emoji pause yes. So they don't have a Hanukkah emoji. There's no menorah. But there's a Christmas tree emoji. Just to say it. That was upsetting me this morning when I wanted oh, to text I got, my I need to get I need to get on the eight fierce Jews of Hanukkah. We need to celebrate oh, that. Yes. Always, okay, our, our TSL we're tradition. That. All right, we're we rambling. We love you. Love you. Bye. Hold an edge and look. <laughs> look pause. Sexy. We can't miss the ending. Pause. Hold pause. an edge and, and look, look sexy. sexy. Bye, Bye, guys. guys.